channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am coming to you actually a day early since I have family plans this weekend. It has been a very busy week. I didn't get chosen for jury duty. I am now ready for my weekend. Jumping into the things that I have finished this week. First off, I finished Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. This is one of the novellas nominated for the Nebulas, and I'd heard a lot of different people talking about it, but it didn't quite prepare me for this book. This is a noir paranormal set in Chicago. That isn't a question, it is set in Chicago. I'm gonna say maybe the early 20s, 1920s kind of thing. I'm not sure on the time period. I actually really enjoyed this. The main character, Elena, or her, her name is Elena Brandt, but she goes by Helen. I could understand the decision she had made and how she had gotten to where she is. It pops you into the story pretty quickly, but it does take the time to give you the background that you need in order to move forward. And I really enjoyed it. I will have more details in my video about the novellas. And then the end of the month always seems like I have a whole bunch of books that are ready to be picked up and my library allows me to check out 50 so and I have 48 currently out so I was like all right I need to read things so I can return because I have nine things waiting so I went for the graphic novels that have been sitting on my shelf for a couple months I read volume one in January so I read volume two of Fence volume three of Fence and volume four of Fence and this is a series I'm very much enjoying. This series starts to follow Nicholas, who is wanting to fence, be a fencer like his biological dad. And he's trying to prove that he's good enough. So he goes into a first competition in the first book and meets Seji, and Seji beats his ass. Because <laughs> Nicholas doesn't have a lot of formal training. We've only re briefly met Jesse, but Jesse is Nicholas's half-brother and the acknowledged son of his father. So this is Nicholas's time at an all-boys school trying out for the team because they've been told that only three, sorry, only three boys make the team. So he's been trying to get on this team. He's a scholarship student. If he doesn't make it, he doesn't get to stay if he doesn't make the team. So there's that tension. And then Seji also happens to come to the school and he, after losing to him at that first match, he was like, oh, you're going to be my rival. And Seji's rival is Jesse, his half-brother. While it's a contemporary book, it has a lot of tension in different ways, and I'm just really enjoying it. I think the f number five is out, so that will be my next one, and I think this is an ongoing series. And lots of potential since Nicholas is a freshman, so we have some years of watching him get better and become more cohesive as a team. All right, so that is what I have finished. And I haven't really picked up anything else. I've just, yeah, no, and I had, haven't actually picked up anything else. I am planning on this weekend reading Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, which is another, oh, well, this is actually a novel that's nominated for the Hugos. It's a short one though, so hopefully. I have my public health readathon books. I have Epidemic Illusions, which is my health equity prompt. Refusing Compulsory Sexuality, which is my LGBTQ plus health prompt. I have Private Guns and Public Health, which is my policies and laws book. And then I have The Color of Law, which is my housing prompt book. And I know two of those prompts will work for my Magical Readathon. One is Start a Book Eating Something, and the other is it has to be a book from your highest shelf, which my library shelf is my highest shelf. For my writing wrap-up, I have started in my head going through different scenes that I want my 
romantic couple to like have conversations about that's kind of how I guess I'm approaching this it's like what conversations do they need to have since this is a friends to lovers romance and one of them has been married before it's divorced now and so from my own experience marrying someone who had been divorced there are certain conversations you'll have versus when it's first time love for everyone kind of plotting or starting to get those scenes down that's kind of what I'm looking to do this next month is outline my romance book. And for other media, Dustin and I keep watching the Harry Potter movies. We've now watched The Goblet of Fire, which is my least favorite, and then Order of the Phoenix, and we have watched The Half-Blood Prince which those later ones, I don't remember the books as well because I haven't read the books as often. I think I've enjoyed the movies more because I'm like, oh, I don't remember all the details, all the little Easter eggs that are hidden in the movies. I don't remember all of them. So I'm not being distracted, I guess. I don't know. I've also picked up Midsummer Murders, which is a British TV show. Couldn't quite remember which season I was on. And so I was reading with the season synopsis or the episode synopsis were and I'm like well I remember season little things from season 17 I'll just restart in 17 and then go forward and like I'm remembering oh I know I watched this episode but not necessarily but not necessarily how it has wrapped up and that is my week in a nutshell it's crazy that even though I've been so busy this week my wrap-up is on the shorter side but I guess that makes sense because I haven't been able to put the time into creative things. Are you doing any readathons for April? I'd love to know down below. Thank you and have a great day. <laughs>